happy 2022. My goodness, welcome to a brand new year on The Elegant Life and a new year for you personally. You know, I thought that I would start off this year by getting personal myself, showing you some of the reflections that I've done personally on 2021 and what I see and what I envision and what I actually feel that my soul is craving more of in 2022. And by doing this, I hope to guide you in some of the questions that you could be reflecting on yourself. Because what I know for sure is our next best year never really gets there without knowing what's worked and what hasn't and deciding, consciously making a choice about what we're going to put as our focus for 2022. So let's get personal. Let's have a woman to woman chat. Before I get into all of that, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to this channel. If you're someone who is really looking at going into this new year, wanting to know how to live in your feminine energy. I mean, we have masculine and feminine, and we have to know how to create them in harmony. Yet a woman can truly be her most empowered self when she's living from 80% feminine. And that's what I teach you here at this channel. It helps you manifest, live, and have extraordinary confidence. So go ahead and click the subscribe button if that interests you. So one of the first questions I always ask myself is what worked in 2021 and why? It's so important, I find, to look back and think, okay, that worked. I could see the benefits of that and I'm just going to continue doing that. If we don't do that, perhaps we'll let positive things that we've been doing go by the wayside. I know I'm going to talk about that a little bit in a second of one thing that was really working for me at one time and I let go and I realized, geez, I need to bring it back. So I'll get to that in a second. So what did I do that worked? For me, there was a lot that I had decided at the end of the year before this to simplify things in my business and my work. It was changing people on my team. It was adding people to my team. It was releasing certain things that I was doing or I had in my business. And that just really worked. And then if I ask why, it's because something that I bring back all the time is to know your top five values. And your top five values will always be your compass to come back to right? And one of my top five values is freedom. And I realized that different aspects of what I just said were causing me to feel a lack of freedom. And that was just not working for me. So I fixed that in 2021. And I constantly checked in with myself to see where I could refine things even more. And I'll tell you something, last year in my business was a, the most successful year I've ever had, and B, literally was the happiest year I've ever had in my business. And I love my business, but like to say that it could get even better was just amazing. So that really worked for me. And I am going to continue this year checking in, checking in. Is there anything else I can refine, let go of? Do I need a new staff member? Do I need to let someone go? Like I will constantly be checking in with that. So I would invite you to ask yourself that question, what worked for me in 2021 and why? And then the opposite, right? The contrast is useful information as well. What didn't work? One thing I stopped doing that didn't work for me is this habit that I used to have. It was a question I asked myself every day and I know some of my clients are going to gasp that Erin you didn't ask yourself this question because I teach all of my clients to ask this question. I think what happened was because there was this period of time where we had to so abruptly move from Dubai to our home in Turkey here uh, there was so much change that I really fell out of some of my habits that I had. And when I reflected on what I felt was missing last year I thought, oh, it's because I didn't ask myself this question. So you're probably saying, what is this question, Erin? It is simply this. What does my soul want to enjoy today? Every morning, 
I would ask myself this question. And this is magical when you ask yourself this question. So I would give that as a little tip to you, which leads me into the next question. When were you happiest in 2021? What were you doing? What were you experiencing? What were you enjoying? Who were you being? And I really recommend journaling this one out, okay? Because, wow, can it bring you some really brilliant information. Think back over the year. When were you most happy? Now, I know for some people last year was so difficult. It was, it was a tough year. You might think, well, I, I can't even think. But I want you. You do have moments when you were happy. Were you watching certain YouTube videos, certain YouTube channels? Were you watching certain programs? Were you going out on walks? Were you spending time with certain people? Were you reading? When were you happiest? I know when I looked over my life, I realized, wow, my happiest moments last year were when I was in connection with the people that mean the most to me. So when I was going on walks just with my husband or with my family in the morning, I was so happy and content. When I would at night lie in bed with my daughter and we would cry from laughter every single night because we were watching a certain YouTube channel, that was a moment when I was purely happy. If any of you want to know what my some of my favorite YouTube channels that I watch are, please let me know in the comments below because I would love to share my joy and pleasure with you. They filled my soul with so much beauty. Like it filled me up. Let me know if you'd like that. Spending time with the ladies in the Elegant Art to Feminine Confidence program, it, it takes me about two hours to come down from a high. I adore the connection that we all have. We laugh. I mean, I come out of the room sometimes and my, my husband says, well, what did you guys do in there? You look like you had a good time because I'm laughing so much. And then at the same time, we go deep. We're so connected. And there's this beautiful balance. It's just gorgeous. So connection with the people that mean the most to me was absolutely what, what gave me the happiest moments. And then again, we need to look at the contrast. When were the times that you felt most down, the most sad? And then why? And if I get really vulnerable and personal here, Many of you know that I live in the Mediterranean in our beautiful house here overlooking the sea in Turkey. And so many people, when they come to visit, they say to me, Erin, literally you are living a life that people only dream of. And I tell you, there's about 10 times a day that I am so grateful and so thankful for where I live. And yet, last year particularly, was one of the hardest years personally, emotionally for me. And I'll tell you why. Because there are not many people here that speak English. And for me, as you can see, one of the things that makes me happiest is connection through spending time and through talking. We had some very lovely people here and most of them speak English. So it was like, wow, what a joy, what luck, what beautiful gift from the universe. And yet when we would go out as a group, what ended up happening every single time was the language would flip to Turkish and I would sit there in silence. And I have never felt such loneliness as not just one, not just two, but multiple, multiple moments last year. Probably because of the whole pandemic that's going on, you know, I needed that connection 
even more. Ooh, there were moments. So I knew what brought me the most unhappiness and why. Now here's the next question. What are you going to do about it? I will tell you that sometimes it takes a lot of courage to say what you need to do. For some of you, it's letting friends go. For some of you, it's letting partners go. For some of you, it's letting clients go. It just has to be the bravest thing that you do. Or as I finally had to do, I had to learn how to use my voice and finally, finally say to these people, look, I don't understand anything that's going on. So if you guys want me to leave, I can go. But it's not healthy for me to be sitting here just on the sidelines, just not understanding. And um, there was one moment when someone said, but it's good for you to learn Turkish. And I said, no, because this is not what I come to these gatherings for. I don't come here to learn Turkish. I come here to connect. Ooh, the only reason I could say that was because I had done the reflection. And the only reason I could finally say that is because I've been deepening my self-confidence and using my feminine voice, right, over the years. So this is something that never could I even have thought of doing. And now I was able to do. So again, what did not work for you? Were there always friends that you would talk to and you would leave feeling worse? Whatever it is, what didn't work, why? And with this one, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to remove that from this 2022, okay? So beautiful questions to ask yourself. And I promise you that if you do all of these questions and you actually really make them your focus, then you will have an incredible soul filling year. So those are my reflections on 2021 and going into 2022. And on that note, let's make it the most elegant week and I'll see you next time.